Hi, my name is Andy Stanley, and I'm the founding pastor of North Point Community Church in Atlanta, Georgia. In the mid-1990s, a group of us saw a need for a different kind of church in Atlanta. So we planned for about a year, and then we purchased an 85-acre tract of land just north of the city, where we ultimately built a 226,000-square-foot building with seating capacity for about 5,000 people. Since that time, we've built two additional campuses in the Atlanta area, and every single weekend, believe it or not, about 22,000 people attend one of our three Atlanta campuses. In addition to that, we've started 21 similar type churches throughout the United States and Canada. Now, one of the things that has contributed to our success has been our ability to cast a compelling vision and then make it stick. We decided at the very beginning that everybody, our staff and all of our congregations, needed to be able to answer two simple questions. What are we doing and how do I fit in? What are we doing and how do I fit in? The other thing we decided is that if people don't know where we're going, it's because we haven't made it clear. During our time together, I want to share with you what we've discovered about developing a corporate vision and then making it stick. Now, I realize that our contexts are very different, but I believe the principles that I'm going to discuss are completely transferable. Now, since we're discussing vision, let's begin with the definition. A vision is simply a mental picture of what could be, fueled by a passion that it should be. A mental picture of what could be, fueled by a passion that it should be. Now, as you know, a mental picture of what could be is really nothing more than a dream, and we've all had dreams. But when your picture of what could be is harnessed with a passion that something needs to be, that something has to be done or changed, then you're on the verge of a vision. Vision always begins with a burden, a burden for something that needs to be done. If you're a leader in an organization, either for-profit or not-for-profit, chances are you're pretty clear on what your vision is. The challenge, of course, is that vision doesn't stick. Vision leaks. As clear as you think you've been, invariably somebody walks up and asks a question that you've already answered a hundred times and they make a suggestion that makes you wonder if they've heard anything you've said as it relates to the direction of your organization. And you wonder how in the world could they have lost focus so quickly? You just talked about that. So the tendency for us is to get frustrated, but the truth is, if the people in our organization have questions about where we're headed, it's probably because the vision has leaked, and that's not really their fault. Ultimately, it's our fault. So at the end of the day as the leader, it's your responsibility and mine to make sure that the vision has stuck with the people we're working with. Now the encouraging news is this, this is not something unique to your organization or mine. In February of 2007, an email leaked out of Starbucks headquarters, and of course initially there was some question about its authenticity, but as it turns out, this was actually an email sent from Howard Schultz, the chairman of Starbucks, to Jim Donald, who was then the CEO, and it started like this. As we prepare for the 2008 strategic planning process, I want to share some of my thoughts with you. Over the past 10 years, in order to achieve the growth, development, and scale necessary to go from less than 1,000 stores to 13,000 stores and beyond, we have had to make a series of decisions that, in retrospect, have led to the watering down of the Starbucks experience and what some might call the commoditization of our brand. Many of these decisions were probably right at the time and on their own merit would not have created the dilution of the experience. But, in this case, the sum is much greater and, unfortunately, much more damaging than the individual pieces. It's time to get back to the core and make the changes necessary to evoke the heritage, the tradition, and the passion we all have for the true Starbucks experience. Now, the first time I read that, and after I checked around to make sure it was authentic, it kind of blew my mind. Here's a guy who has essentially unlimited resources. He has access to all the gurus, all the business inside in the world. And one day he wakes up and takes a hard look at his own organization, an organization we all love, and then concludes that their vision is leaking. Now here's a business leader who looks at this incredible organization and he says to paraphrase, you know what? We've lost our focus. Our organization has made decisions that have worked against the very thing that we set out to do. Now I'll tell you, if that can happen to Howard Schultz, it can happen to me and it can certainly happen to you. Why? Because vision doesn't stick without constant care and attention. In fact, it's the nature of vision not to stick. As you think about it, everything is tough on vision. Success is tough on vision. As your organization is successful, it's going to grow. And with growth comes complexity. 
And as you already know, complex organizations easily lose their focus. But failure is tough on vision as well, isn't it? When things don't go well, the tendency is to panic, to grab the sides of the canoe, and we overact and often lose focus in the midst of the process. Without us realizing it, vision disappears in the midst of all the crisis and the chaos. So success, failure, and I believe everything in between is tough on vision. Life is tough on our organizational vision. Through the years, I've discovered five things I think a leader can do to ensure that their vision really sticks. In the following sessions, I will talk about each one of them in detail. But as we close this first session, I wanna go ahead and list them for you. So here we go. To make vision stick, you have to state it simply, cast it convincingly, repeat it regularly, celebrate it systematically, and embrace it personally. One more time. State it simply, cast it convincingly, repeat it regularly, celebrate it systematically, and embrace it personally.